directed by the same doctrine with the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, united by the living word. Brethren from parts of all over the world participate in one service together in the same body and in the same spirit. Through the system of transmission satellite, the members from Maranatha Christian Church live a moment of unity and come in fellowship like the Hebrews lived when they left Egypt and like the disciples lived with Jesus when he was about to die on the cross of Calvary. People from parts of all over the world have been reached by this eternal gospel and of the message of the soon return of the Lord. Brethren, a peace of the Lord, we are transmitting this Sunday school from our Central of Communications and the city of Vila Velha in the state of Espírito Santo. And in this Sunday school, it's the 1st of March, we are happy to receive here some guests. We have a, a group of Russians that are here with us and a group of brethren from the United States, also some brethren from Japan. And here we're showing some images of these brethren. We have some brethren from all over Brazil too here with us, all of which are participating in this Sunday school. There is also another group that is not here in the studio with us, but they are in another room, and they're also giving us the honor and the pleasure of participating with them in the Sunday School. We're going to give now a few announcements to the brethren of some events that happened in Maranatha Christian Church. First of all, in um, all over the world, in the state of Massachusetts and the United States, they participated in a seminar, also the churches in Mexico, the couple that you guys see in the picture, they are a couple of pastors that have been defined in the word. And they are they are willing, they have the desire to live a deeper experience with the Lord. We have also given um, assistance to churches in Nicaragua. And here are some images of these brethren. In Brazil, we had a seminar in Brasilia, Brasilia which is the capital. There have been seminars in various other parts of Brazil as well, along with seminars for the youth and the Manaíns of Campina Grande. And in the Manaíns of Curitiba, there was also another youth seminar there. These youth, they are united and they are studying of science and faith. There has also been a few um, ordinations, and we are happy with how the work is growing in those in those places. 
There was also some vigils and special services with the, the teaching project that we have in Brazil. There has also been a few graduations with people who are learning Brazilian sign language. There has also been evangelizations all over Brazil in places like Salvador and um, Governador de Valadares. Various other evangelizations in parts in various parts all over Brazil, various cities. And in Haiti, there was also, in Santa Catarina, there was a, a service that was geared towards the Haitians that lived in that area, and a lot of them participated in the service as well. That was a big blessing. Various baptisms all over Brazil as well, in Minas Gerais, in Pachinga, Boa Vista. In the Manaí of Uberlandia, various of our brethren passed through the waters. In Rio Grande do Norte, and we also had a sister that was 90 years old that she also baptized in the state of the Espírito Santo in Brazil. And here we see a group of brethren who actually converted in our event of trumpets and feasts and there they got baptized recently because of this event. Now a few inform some information that we have to give to the brethren. We have a new um, project with um, assistance of children with deficiencies and um, mental deficiencies, we are trying to work more for them to understand and for them to be able to watch the classes that are given in the churches at home. Um, here is a website that the teachers, parents can use to help assist our, these children, um, especially for the children who have deficiencies. We also have material. We're trying to distribute material that is written in Braille. So these children can also understand. Um, children who are blind can also participate in these in these um, classes and, and events and also understand. We are also trying to make a a songbook in Braille as well for those who are blind. They're going to have um, an amplified font so they can they can feel it. And the children in Amsterdam, they were singing the song um, Our Lord is Our, is our Pastor. And here's a video of them singing. They sang in Portuguese, but also in their in their language.
Hallelujah. And this video that you are watching now is also another group of children in Russia. They are also going to sing in Portuguese and Russian. We are giving a piece of the Lord now to our Brazilian children. This is the new animation that we are making for the for the songs that we are showing every week a song, a children's song that's animated. Glory to God. Amen, brethren. We'd like to give one more, one more announcement in respect to some of the events that happened this week that the presbytery um, was sensitive to these, to these announcements. Um, it has to do with the passing of one of our sisters who participated with us in this work ever since the beginning. And it was our sister Teresinha. She was um, the wife of a pastor that we were, that we, that's very beloved here. She died 79 years old. And last Friday, she was trying to recuperate from a surgery, a cardiac surgery. She had just completed 59 years of marriage, and this was a very big loss that we endured. And we are sensitive and send our prayers to, the, to their families. And on the 29th, our sister, she was mother of one of our pastors. She also passed, unfortunately. She died 99 years old in the church of Goiânia in Goiás. Her burial, her burial was made the next, was completed, it was done the next day. 
da preocupação do presidente Terry está sensível a essas situações que ocorrem no nosso país. Um, we want to announce these things to, to show that we are sensitive to these informations and we do value our, our brethren and we are very sad to hear that they, they passed. The children cannot be released to their classes. The, the Sunday school today is going to be focused in um, songs of songs. And we're going to transfer the word now to Pastor Jadochi. Brethren, peace of the Lord. I'm sure the brethren already know, but today is the first Sunday of the month. Last month and the first Sunday, we started a study that we wanted to complete today. It is in the in the book of Song. Some brethren even requested that we would repeat this this teaching so the pastors could hear. Some of the pastors had some um, some work or their own message that they wanted to give that day. So they wanted us to to repeat this message. And this first Sunday of the month, we allow for the pastors to to do to give whatever they want, if they want to give a message to their church or anything of that sort. But we will still be having our transmissions, and the the topic of today will be about the rapture of the church and some of these topics we've already discussed last month the first Sunday of last month. Some of the questions and answers were also already given. There was the participation of our brethren. And today we wanted to bring up again a small topic that was that is of very, very big importance to us with this study that we are completing in this time. What we have for today we are going to rem be reminded of what we, we talked previously. Um, Pastor Gilson is going to give us some questions. And the very last question that Gilson is going to give us, he's going to give us a small teaching that is going to allow us to um, understand deeper. And maybe the pastors will want to give a message about it tonight. And we're going to analyze aspects of this book of songs. Songs of Solomon. And which is all related to the prophetic moment of the rapture of the church. Um, we're talking about the parable of the virgins, the parable of the... Ten virgins. Um, we are going to be discussing everything that is pointing to our our rapture in the Old Testament that is pointing to the final days. And we're going to provide some answers. Um, so we have some pastors here that are going to give a contribution as well. Pastor Samir is here to translate. We're going to learn a little bit more of the word of the Lord today. Pastor Josen. Very well, brethren. Giving sequence to our our topic that was started last month. We're going to now give the first question of the day. We're going to open in... We're going to open in Songs of Solomon. Chapter 6, verse 10. And the question is, who does the text refer to? In Psalm 6, 10, who is the text referring to? Um, when we ask this question, who are they referring to? It's prophetically. Who are they referring to prophetically in this text, in this verse? Who do they refer to prophetically in the text of Songs, chapter 6, verse 10? Let's see the answer. 
We could even invite the church. You're reminding the brethren that Songs of Solomon is a poetic book. It's historic, but also prophetic. Um, it has a poetic language, and it's written in a historical time period of Solomon, but it is prophetically pointing to um, the the prophetic time of of soon and of the rapture of the church the text says who is that that appears like the dawn fair as the moon bright as the sun majestic as the stars in procession all right, we read together this this text. Now we're going to review the answer. So who is who do they refer to prophetically in this text? We are the question that we are asking is who is this who appears like the dawn fair as the moon bright as the sun we have here an answer from one of our pastors who is going to who is going to tell us a little contribution the pastor is going to give the answer now I am Pastor Paulo in Aracruz. The answer is the church, but not only the church, but the church that is going to be raptured, the church that is going to go with Jesus to heaven. So who is this who is, appears like the dawn? It's the church who is going to participate in the rapture, who is going to go with Jesus into heaven. It's the victorious church that we're talking about. Which is why in the verse, she is introduced, her identity, she is introduced prophetically as how is how is this church the church is like like the dawn then she is fair like the moon then she is bright like the sun and finally she is majestic like the stars in procession here we see how the different characteristics that the church is given it's it's not just one characteristic but it's multiple different descriptions when we say that she's like the dawn because when midnight strikes she is the new day she is no she is no doesn't have to do with the night time she is the one who's going to bring the light. She is the light. When we say fair, fair, we refer to as she's fair like the moon. Why do we say that she's the, like the moon? Because the church is reflected a reflection of the light of the sun. And if Jesus is the son of justice, the church has to reflect this. The church reflects the light of Jesus, the light of God. And she is this light that's in the world. We reflect the light of Jesus in this world. And why is she as bright as the sun? It's because she was anointed by God. God, Jesus, baptized the church with his Holy Spirit. And he gave her this power, this authority to shine in the world as light of the world. So that is why she is shining and she is as bright as the sun. It's the Lord Jesus in the church. He's the one that gives her this light. He's the one that gives the church our, our light. And when we say majestic as the stars in procession, the church is victorious because they have she has endured all of the persecutions all of the 
all of these the bonfires all of these all of these difficulties and she has been victorious in the end and she is only waiting for one moment which is the rapture which is the coming the return of the Lord Jesus she was victorious in the presence of the Lord and she not once was defeated and the church very soon we are going to we are going to experience the very the biggest victory which is salvation when man is going to be defeated and those world is going to be no longer and we are going to contemplate the biggest victory of all the biggest feast and the biggest the biggest occurrence in, in the history of the church which is going to be the rapture and we will have salvation so this is the answer the church is what this text is referring to in Songs of Solomon 6.10 the next question we have is in Songs of Solomon chapter 6 verse 12 who do, are they referring to now in this text in chapter 6 verse 12 they're making a reference to something as well in this text and we are going to try to figure out who they're who the text is referring to so the question is who does this text refer to reminding the brethren that again this is a prophetic reference let's read it together now so we can understand before I realized it my desire set me among the royal chariots of my people so here is an expression of the church that is related to what is going to happen to her in the moment that this text is referring to so the question is what are they referring to maybe not who but what what is the the context of this of this verse so this this text refers to prophetically speaking let's go to the answer someone gonna give us the answer one of the pastors can can answer this question for us this, this text refers to the rapture it's the moment and when we are going to blink and be and be found in the arms of our father the rapture this is what the text is referring to the text says before I realized it before I realized it my desire set me among the royal chariots of my people and this is referring to this rapture this time of the rapture because it's going to be a moment that in a blink of an eye we're going to be gone it's going to be it's going to happen really quickly and the apostle Paul, he referred to this moment when he he said it's going to be in the blink of an eye before I realized it. Here he was trying to make this point that this is the moment that we are referring to. The Holy Spirit was speaking is speaking in this text prophetically because it, this is what the the text is trying to say. In Song of Solomon chapter 6, verse 12, it's the moment of the rapture, the moment in the rapture of the church in which she's going to be blink in a blink of an eye. We're all going to leave this world and <coughs> encounter, encounter Jesus. Next question is in Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 13. What is the cry? What is a plea that the that this text is referring to prophetically? What is the plea? What is the cry? In Songs of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 13. 
Let us now together read this, this verse, chapter 6, verse 13. This verse makes, does, makes a cry, and it says, Come back, come back, O Shulamite. Come back, come back, so that we may gaze on you. Why would you gaze on the Shulamite as on the dance of Manaim? In chapter 6, verse 13, what is this cry? What is this representing of prophetically? What is its representation? So this expression, come back, come back, O Shulamite, this is the cry. And who is the one that is using this cry? Who is the one that's making this plead? And what is it referred to? Brother of the church, let's go. So brethren, in Songs of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 13, it is referring to the, the church that is going to be raptured, the church that is going to be taken from this world. And this, this verse refers to the world and how the world is going to react by her departure. They're going to say, come back, come back, O Shulamite because they're going to have this desire to contemplate the church after she is gone. And this desire is made up of the whole entire world. They are going to feel her absence. And so they, they're going to make this plea. They're going to cry out and tell her to come back because the light of the world is going to be ended in the moment that the church is going to be raptured, the church, in the moment that the church departs. And so the world is going to want her back. And who's going to who's going to miss this faithful church the most? The church that's unfaithful, the church that stays behind. We can say that it's the unfaithful church. In a church we are we have in within a church we have the faithful and the unfaithful church. The faithful church is the only one who is going to departure and leave with Jesus when he comes back. The unfaithful church is the one who's going to stay and she's going to that's the one that's going to miss the faithful church the most. And this is the cry, this is the plead that they're going to make. Come back, come back, O Shulamite. And that is the answer to the question. This is the this is the cry, come back, come back. And this highlights the importance and the necessity of being ready in these final moments. Because we don't want to be part of this unfaithful church that wants to that's gonna to want to cry out for them to for the faithful church to come back. We want to be part of the faithful church. In chapter 3, verse 1, it says exactly of this church that stays behind. Um, the pastor made this quick reference in chapter 3, verse 1 of Songs of Solomon that refers to this moment that is going to happen right before the rapture. And, and the church, the unfaithful church, is going to seek, but they're not going to find. In the nighttime, the verse says, All night long in my bed, I looked for the one my heart loves. I looked for him, but I did not find him. And in verse, this is what happens before the rapture, before the departure of the church. Verse 6 is what happens right afterwards when they're pleading her to come back. A little parallel between what happens before and after these two verses. We have one more question. All right, now this is the the principal the principal question, the last one. Um, in the reading of Songs of Solomon, chapter seven, verse nine, what does now what does this text refer to prophetically? 
what or who does this text refer to prophetically? Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 9. Let's read together this verse so we can facilitate the understanding. The verse says, And your mouth, like the best wine, may the wine go straight to my beloved, flowing gently over lips and teeth. This is a prophetic, poetic verse. And it says, the when it says your mouth is like the best wine, it refers to the Holy Spirit. And this is referring to the love that is present between the church and God. And it's only made possible by the Holy Spirit. Because God loved us so much, He gave us and He left us with the Holy Spirit here on earth. And it's through the Holy Spirit that we have access to God. May the wine go straight to my beloved, flowing gently over lips and teeth. This refers to the resurrection. This is what this verse is referring to, the resurrection. What is the resurrection? And it's exactly as it is written in this verse. It's to drink from the wine. And it's through this wine, it's through this Holy Spirit that the wine is resembling of, that we will have life. Here, the sleeping in this verse is dying to this life, but drinking this wine is to live for the eternal life. So what does this verse refer to in Songs of Solomon chapter 7 verse 9? It refers to the resurrection. The church that drinks this wine, the Holy Spirit, and she's full of the Holy Spirit. If she's full of life, she's full of this wine, she has a new life. She's defeated death, and she is now going to live eternally. This wine is life. It's the Holy Spirit in the church, and it is through the Holy Spirit that we will have eternal life. Very well. We're going to um, speak of one more topic very quickly, and then we're going to have. And here we're going to give the suggestions for the message of tonight. This right here. You can put up the the verse. It says, "Come, my beloved." Let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. The question is this the following. Prophetically, what does this this invitation refer to refer to? This invitation when the verse says, Come, my beloved, let us go to the countryside, let us spend the night in the village. What is this invitation? What what moment what instant is the church speaking to Jesus in this moment? The church is speaking speaking to Jesus, but in what what are they referring to in this verse? The church is going to is going to depart. It's going to the rapture is going to happen. The church is going to be victorious. The world when the verse says, let us spend the night in the villages, that is the church already living with Jesus out of the, out of the night time. In the period of the tribulations and the suffering, period of suffering, the church will be preserved. She's going to spend it with Jesus in the villages. Jesus and with, we're going to be saved with God. So we're not going to spend the time of suffering and the tribulation, tribulations. All the blessings, the gifts, we're going to 
We're going to live this moment of peacefulness while the world is in despair that is going through this period of nighttime. The church is going to be parted, separated from the world and be with Jesus. And that's what this verse, this part of the verse refers to. Let us spend the night in the villages instead of being with the world and living the the, the times of suffering and the tribulations we're going to be separated we're going to be already with Jesus and saved we're going to in a, in a way be speaking to, with Jesus and Jesus is going to reveal to us all of the mysteries of eternity we're going to have a new life we're going to live in this way a new moment for the church after the rapture so this can be the message that is brought tonight reminding the brethren that this this word nighttime this word night is the key word in this verse night you see in various other um, in various other parables and stories at midnight in the in the ten virgins parable in the wedding parable we see nighttime this nighttime is going to be the moment in when the world is in despair in the nighttime there is no more salvation there's no more chance the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to, to do this work. The world is not scared of anything because they don't they don't see consequences in their actions. But the end consequence is going to be this. They're gonna have to endure the night, the the consequences of their sins, the suffering the end times when they are left behind but the church is so anxious we do not want to be part of the night time the, the time of tribulation and suffering instead we're going to be with Jesus in the villages we're going to be separated from the world we are not going to suffer in Cantares 2 in Song of Solomon 2 the book of Song of Solomon is, is all about this it's all about the rapture about how the church should prepare it's it's a chain of, of various ways that the church can prepare and be ready in and accounts of how the rapture will be, how the return of the Lord will be. And there are many verses that we can refer to and, and go back and forth with. But it can get a little confusing because it's so rich in, in substance in the Songs of Solomon. This topic is very rich in so much so much to learn in this in this in this chapter. All right, brethren, in this on this note, we are going to end our Sunday school teaching for this morning. We observing we want to make sure the brethren observe there are many channels that you can you can watch the official channels of the church and we end the service greeting the wishing the brethren peace of the Lord
Amen. Let's sing a song. Glória a Jesus. Vamos colocar de pé. As crianças vão cantar o louvor? Prepararam o louvor? Amém. Vamos ouvir as crianças. Hoje é o me... Esse mês é o mês das crianças, né? Remediários, adolescentes.
a Deus. Vocês podem se ajoelhar. Vamos orar por eles. Bata o sábado, por favor. Jesus, one more time, we plead for the blood of Jesus Christ. We present before your throne, Lord, each child, each adolescent, each intermediate, also those who take care of your children, Lord, the parents, the guardians, their family members. Extend your hands, Lord, over their lives, Lord, and leading them in the path that they should walk so they can be a blessing, Lord, in your presence, vessels of, of praise and honor in your house, Lord. Also, bless the material lives, their material lives, the professional lives of their parents. Lord, keep giving them grace, grace to the parents, health, Lord. We ask for your blessing. We plead. Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. Senhor Deus, bendizemos o teu nome por mais essa manhã na tua presença pelo Teu ensino que foi passado, pelo entendimento, pelas revelações recebidas. E agora pedimos que Tu possas receber o nosso culto em adoração ao Teu nome. Leva-nos em paz e que tenhamos um dia, Senhor, totalmente voltado para o culto da noite e que possamos orar ao Senhor, que possamos sair ao campo, evangelizar, lançar a semente e que o culto dessa noite Lord, to the Lord, the service of tonight there could be saving of lives, salvation, Lord. And in your name, Lord, we say the grace of, the, of our Father, Lord. The eternal consolations of His Holy Spirit can be poured over all of our lives, now and forever. Amen. The brethren can be seated. This moment that we are living, the moment of soon, is is cause for great prayer. We should be praying every day for this and this. We have to be praying for this moment and also avoiding things that isn't going to give us enrich us or lead us in the right path. I also advise the brethren to, to be cautious of, um, of economic conditions. This is not the time for us to be switching jobs, um, changing things that have been already predetermined for a long time. It's not the time to be messing with the economy every day. This is a moment that we should be praying, <laughs> praying about um, the virus that's going around countries that haven't had them, are starting to have them, but we know that the faithful ones are going to be preserved because the blessing of, of Jesus is over the faithful church. Our services here are going to, everything here is closed. The air conditioning is the air conditioning here is very good. We have to keep it in a low temperature, however, so if you need to bring a jacket, you need to bring scarves, you're welcome to. We have to keep this place cold, though, because viruses thrive more in warmer areas, warmer conditions, so we want to not be we want that not to happen. We have no conditions to keep the air conditioning high. So we're going to keep it nice and cool in here. And it's even good, so we're not exposed. We can be wearing the right to clothes, which is good because everyone's going to come dressed appropriately. Amen. The services, we are going to be careful with the, the time. We're not going to spend too much time, go too over the limit in the services during the week, services on weekends. We're going to 
We're going to also shorten the time of songs after the message. Usually we like to sing a lot of songs after the message, but we're going to be making it shortening this time so we are not here for a long time after the service. So everyone can just go home, um, get out, so we can all so we can get out of this closed area. I'm also not, I'm not going to tell anyone that is sick to not come. However, if you are sick, if you are um, getting sick, try to seek a doctor. Do not um, come into too close of contact with other people. Um, we care about the well-being of, our, of everyone. And we don't want people getting sick from each other. If you are sick, just come, just don't come one day to church, it is fine, miss a service, maybe two, recuperate, get better so you can be here with us, do not try to come and get other people sick, that is very dangerous. For the events, um, with in precaution, um, we are taking precautions with the events. We are canceling them before they happen. So the big events, we are making them smaller. While there is no solution for this um, coronavirus that's going around, we cannot take any risks. We're not going to try to make too many um, meetings and reunions and stuff like that because we don't want to or want to limit this time that we are together as much as possible because of this because of this problem and we have to pray so that the lord can put his hands over our lives because this is this is dangerous for all of us for our, our lives our spiritual lives everything but to all